Hello Twin Flames, welcome to my channel, welcome to the new week and as promised today we're going to be talking about Mercury Retrograde. This starts on April 1st, uh, it's about 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so for some of you it may actually be April 2nd. Check your time zone, um, I do get uh, quite a few of you in Asia and obviously even if you are in Europe, there is still a good chance that that's already going to be the new day. Uh, but whatever it is, first, second, more importantly, it's going to last for three weeks. That's how long Mercury retrograde always lasts. So it's going to end actually approximately on my birthday. But oof, last, last year it started on my birthday. I don't know. It's Which actually helped me realize that it's not something to dread. It's not something to try to avoid. I, you know, like we keep saying, maybe don't have important conversations during this time. Maybe don't plan travel or like things like that, you know, that need a lot of logistics. It can be anything really. A project where a lot of things are supposed to, to fall into place to make it happen. There's a good chance it may go out of, out of sync, out of harmony, right? Because Mercury, is responsible for communication and for transportation. So take it how you will. And no, this time I'm not gonna be doing any major travel at this time. I am planning some travel though, so we'll see how that works out. Uh, but what I've learned for myself, like on a deeper level and kind of like on a visceral level, that not only do I not wanna avoid experiences because of it, but there's actually a great way to work through things. For example, my Chiron is in Gemini, which is guided by Mercury. So essentially, like that wounded healer asteroid is around communication. That means that a lot of my wounding or there's some deep wound specifically around this topic. And Mercury retrograde allows me to pay more attention to it, to get closer to it on many levels. So, you know, like see how you can make it work. What does it allow you to do? Not what it's stopping you from doing. This time it falls into Aries. And I would just say that Aries is a sign of... It's a very personal sign. It's a sign of your individual self, of who you are, what do you need, you know? Those kind of things. What, However you want to present your individual self to the world and like make a mark make it known like this is me this is who i am this is why i'm like all these things but this is me myself and i that's the important part so think how you are what immediately comes to my mind think how you communicate about yourself to the world right mercury communication uh and of course retrograde i'm i'm missing this part out but a lot of you already know that when the planet is in retrograde it means it's internalized energy so the other side of not necessarily having all the, all the difficult conversations with another person is that you get to, to re, like introspect and have those conversations internally, right? And have that inner dialogue with yourself and figure things out. Like, how do you communicate with people? What are your love languages? What is important to you in communication? How important is it? Right, those kind of things. Figure out about who you are. And Aries is asking you to do that more than ever. Of course, you can find out more about your individual situation, looking at your individual chart or turning for that special session. I do those as well, actually. I haven't announced them officially on the website yet, but if you book a personal coaching session with me, we can definitely dive into that. You can let me know in the intro session if that's something you'd be interested in. But I've already given you some ideas. North Node is in Aries still, by the way, till end of this year. So again, think about it as light workers at Twin Flame. How, what, like who you are, like your essence, your soul, your heart, the way you think, the way you talk, how that translates into your mission and why you are here in the first place. That uniqueness of yourself. Figure that out, right? Like be bold in this energy right now to figure out what's unique about you that you're bringing to the table or that you are communicating to the world that makes you special and your mission special here right 
figure go figure so we're gonna do a twin flame reading this is gonna be a more or less um usual spread but of course with the mercury trigate in mind what i want to do for the last question that's usually how twins are seen the connection or what they want to tell each other this is going to be my hermitary deck instead and what i'm going to ask is what is difficult at this point to communicate so what what is going to be the theme of the retrograde for each of the twins and it may be towards each other it may be overall a lot of times these things are connected anyway but take it how you will this is just some food for thought uh something more specific to work with if you don't know where to start on where and if it is difficult to talk about like there is some trigger there as you know that's exactly where you're supposed to look <laughs> and yes we do have the eclipse on the ace that's gonna cruelly ruffle some feathers and make things a little more hectic but you know that's that's where all the fun comes from okay so we're starting with an oracle card and i've already gotten kind of the card for the feminines so for the feminines we have card number 24 Synchronicity is a love letter from the universe across time and space. This is how the universe communicates with you. And then again, by the way, very important um, message here. Message about the message. I mentioned love languages and the way you communicate to the world. This is also for you to figure out permanence, uh, how the world communicates with you, how your guides communicate with you, right? They're different um ways to um through your psychic gifts right through different signs and synchronicities uh through mediums and mentors there's so many ways of how you could be getting those uh downloads channeled messages important information on your journey right this is also something to explore like what are your ways like what are your preferences maybe you like hearing messages through music you just hit your playlist on random and you're asking a question and you want to know what comes in next, right? Like I'm making it up, but you know, like some people actually do that. Whatever it is, it can be something like that, like very specific, but that works for you really well. Think about it and reinstate it. Or if like the signs are really hard to read, then have that conversation with your guides, right? That's also the uh introspective side of it right like and you know they're your they are your guides they're there to help you so help them help you um let them know what kind of communication works for you for the masculines we have number one three two one jump yeah this is like a launching card is this a, kind of a full energy in this deck but it's also launch this is like phew, um which to me is different in a way where there's a certain acceleration to it right like it, things are gonna happen very quickly almost like you were going through a portal which makes sense because we are in a portal right now we will talk about the full four portal this week by the way but uh what i'm talking about is of course the eclipse season we're in the middle of it and that's quite an acceleration that's happening to all of us in different ways I brought my Dream Keeper's Tarot today, so let's see what the cards are going to tell us. I'm only going to pull five today because I'm going to use the Hermit Tarot for the, for the um, last question. The world, bottom of the deck. Cycles coming to close, things starting to make sense. Yeah. And fires. Strength. Yes, you're brave now to see it. You have the courage to recognize not to escape that's what i'm hearing feminines wow i saw this card when i was shuffling so beautiful i love this, this card in this deck you have the sun with six of pentacles so the energy of recognizing the sunshine that you are and that the sunshine around you and attracting more and more of it right that's the law of reciprocity you're shining very brightly right now and this is the momentum to uh, accelerate the personal growth and also to accelerate the way that you're helping this world be a better place, right? And take it how it resonates. It can start with something small, but whatever you had your mindset on, this is the time to act, to expand, 
and to inspire it will come naturally right like that's the big benefit of it when it coincides your personal will coincides with the transits the energies of the universe then it comes in a lot more a lot easier than it could have been um for masculines we have seven of wands clarified by four of pentacles harder energies so masculines are trying to kind of to they don't want to come out of their shell let's put it that way right like the Mercury retrograde, if anything, is is kind of naturally just putting them in their shell, like putting their shield up. They don't want to. They don't want to get out there. <laughs> they don't want to face this world when it's Mercury retrograde, basically, right? So it's like trying to stay safe, keep things easy, and uh, stand their ground firmly, which, of course, as you can see, is not really comply with the card three, two, one jump. So. That's where that tension will be rising, with its culmination around the eclipse time next week. Additional question, Page of Pentacles, clarified by Five of Pentacles. Wow, this is like seeing blessing in disguise, I'm hearing. How to recognize love and kindness in a moment of not getting what you want, in a moment of feeling like you're left out in the cold, like someone or the world at large is not fair to you for all the effort you've put in and all the love you've given. For feminines, King of Swords clarified by Six of Cups. So for feminines, the blessing in disguise is seeing what's real and what's not. Seeing what's for, for your universe, for your reality, what speaks to your inner child, what elates you, elevates you in this experience and what isn't. Right, like seeing it in a very specific, clear way, without any doubt, without any giving it a chance, right? Like seeing it exactly what it is and seeing exactly the logic behind it. Like this isn't good for me and I can see exactly why, right? Or this is exactly where I was supposed to be because X, Y, Z and seeing exactly why. Both, well, both. The past, the present, and the future of it. They come together at this point to show you. For masculines, it's the strength clarified by two of wands. But it's a very interesting type of strength card in this deck. So masculines essentially seeing that they can only get to the other side, to the goodness of the other side, through showing courage and facing the triggers, the battles, the fears, the insecurities, the icky stuff that they're trying to avoid. So the blessing in disguise is that you need to go through that catharsis, through that moment of uh, shock, if you wish, right? Like of being shook up, where you can then, after the storm comes down, you can see clearly where to go to next. And, and of course, of course, thank you for reminding me. You can appreciate the rainbow after that. You can appreciate the love, the kindness, and the joy that you will have in your life after that. Messages. Messages. Well, it's not exactly messages. What are the things that is going to be hard for the feminines to talk about during this retrograde? What is the retrograde highlighting in terms of triggers and insecurities? Well, it's too many cards. I'm sorry. I'm going to shuffle some more. What are the difficult conversations? No. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Okay. Okay. So the first card was no. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Then it was, I imagine me naked. Ooh, not wanting to talk about the... <sighs> Apologies, I'm still fighting my cold, so I'm better today though, but still. Sometimes I wonder if you care and sex. So you see, like there is this topic of uh, sexuality and um, it's something that Obviously, feminines don't want to be the core of the relationship. We quickly got into... I thought it was going to be more generic, but it definitely got into the romantic space. It could be with your um, twin flame, with your 
soulmate whoever is your counterpart that you have on your mind right like um you know that the sexual attraction is a big part of the relationship but you definitely don't want it to be the core of it and this is almost like wondering if that's really what it is right if, if there is nothing else there if there's no emotional depth if there's no deep conversation to have again mercury retrograde right it's like being afraid to really look under that blanket and finding out what it really is right like why is that person around why are they interested what keeps them coming back if anything or if you are in a relationship right now what keeps them around because it doesn't seem like they're into communication that much and or they give you mixed signals through their communication and that brings out triggers of like whether it's even real you know like whether what they say is real or whether this connection is built on something deep and real that of course should include emotional intimacy um, and being able to communicate openly what do we have for the masculines what are the difficult topics for them to talk about during this time my life started when i met you yeah no nah. <laughs> so this constant back and forth between are you like the alpha and the omega for my life or is it just in my fantasy is that what i'm imagining it's almost like it's too big to talk about it like there is fear to talk about it because it sounds corny on the one hand when you say something like that to a person imagine them saying that right like mm, as feminines like would you immediately be like oh yes there's probably gonna be at least like a little bit of time when you'll be wondering like how honest is this <laughs> right so it's like not being sure whether this is a good place like a good thing to communicate about or maybe it's not even real for them right like there's this like back and forth between uh fantasy and reality like maybe it's the fairy tale that they've been t telling themselves there is an unconscious bias that they feel like if there is this one person that is going to be like that and maybe it's just not the reality like it's maybe it's not possible at all right so there is that um it's like a seesaw kind of energy right it will balance itself out eventually hopefully by the end of the stretch grade but right now it is one of the challenges for sure okay i didn't want to make this a long reading it is kind of longish already so i'm gonna leave it here thank you so much for joining me today I'm sure this retrograde will teach us a lot. And if you need a personal reading, don't forget to reach out to me via an email address or through my website, mindfulbamboo.com. And of course, if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to like the video, to subscribe to my channel and to share it with anyone who may benefit from this type of reading. I love you guys. Bye.